hi, how are you going on this crazy, crazy start to a new week? We've had so many announcements regarding coronavirus and closures of things and it's breathtaking how quickly things are evolving here in Australia and I know elsewhere in the world things are equally changing at such a ridiculously fast pace that I think most of us are feeling like our heads are left spinning a little bit. Uh, I have been certainly hoping that most people will take on board the message of remaining as calm as possible, thinking strategically as best they can, and also not headline surfing using reliable sources of information as we navigate our way through this coronavirus pandemic and what it means for our families, for our businesses, and of course for ourselves and our health and well-being. I'm not going to lecture you about hand washing. I'm not going to lecture you about stockpiling. That's not my mission today. However, I did, I did joke with some colleagues this morning that I wanted to create a t-shirt uh, that said, I only stockpile attitude, but I just thought, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> so what I, wanted, what I did want to talk to you about today is this concept of flattening the curve and social distancing and what it means for all of us, especially those of us in small business. So I've made the decision, uh, my husband and I made the decision last night, quite late last night actually, um, to withdraw my younger son from school. So you might know the story. Uh, my uh, older son became um, uh, homeschooled in the final term of last year's academic year. My younger son decided he'd give it a go as well. Then we relocated to Melbourne and there's a fantastic, beautiful big park behind my apartment building here in Melbourne and a gorgeous little primary school. And my son decided, you know, I wanna to go to, my younger son decided he wanted to go to that primary school, which did throw my flexible lifestyle entrepreneur hashtag entrepreneur life lifestyle up in the air a little bit but we made it work until last night now our decision was made on a number of factors so we had in Australia we had um, the Council of Australian governments met over the weekend and so I think there had been a Sorry, my phone rang. Uh, a little bit of breath holding in the community, thinking that perhaps our um, schools might be closed, an announcement might have been made. That announcement wasn't made. Everything else seems to have been closed, but not schools. Now there are economic and other reasons why, from reading between the lines, why government has decided here in Australia at least to keep schools open, at least for now. Um, there's very much a feeling that it's just for now. Here in Victoria, it's school holidays in two weeks time. So we will see what that means in terms of um, when announcements might be made about school closures. For us though, our young son, gorgeous young man that he is, uh, he is the one member of this family who gets knocked the hardest with any kind of respiratory illness. So, it, and it only really dawned on me last night and I thought, he gets knocked about the hardest and yet I'm sending him off to school tomorrow morning. That makes no sense at all. So we made a decision to keep him home and you know what it actually makes the most sense for us as a family because my other son is homeschooled and I work from home it means that we can stay home and do our little bit as a family to reduce exposure in the community um, whether it makes any difference or not who am I to know but it, it makes us feel better it makes us feel like we're doing the right thing my husband is still fly in fly out to Hobart um, until Wednesday and then he's fly in full stop. <laughs> so he'll be here with us in Melbourne from Wednesday onwards and we'll deal with what happens beyond that in terms of the Hobart side of things um, as things unfold. So that's our family situation. Now of course we, I, I'm going to just check my privilege here for a minute. We are fortunate enough to work in the capacity that we can work from home 
we can work from anywhere in the world I can be anywhere and do what I do my husband with a little bit of juggling of meetings can be anywhere in the world and do what he does we are very fortunate but I will say fortunate in that I'm also grateful to our past selves for unwittingly setting ourselves up now to be able to do what we're doing now. So I've got a strong sense of gratitude um, for the journey that he and I've been on over the last 100,000 years. That's how, that's how old I feel today anyway. Um, now let's talk about my business. Now what's happening there? So we have made some announcements publicly for the psychology practice. You know, we've made announcements on our Facebook page for our clients, just around what we expect with regards um, safety and hygiene, what we expect of clients, uh, what we can offer to clients, but also what we expect from our staff. So uh, we have um, you know, a staff member who's got a cold, she's very sensibly at home, working from home, um, you know, and we would expect any other staff member to do the same, of course, under current circumstances, and we've asked clients to do the same. Now, what we're doing next, the next layer of that within our private practice and I say our because of course uh, my colleague Alison Wells has um, she takes over the Hobart practice in a matter of two weeks she'll be the boss down there um, and I will continue to be the boss of the Launceston practice uh, but we work collaboratively and we are planning collaboratively so we've got a united approach for this whole um, the whole mental health practice that we run or practices that we run in Tasmania um, the next layer is what we can offer to our mental health clients now I'm encouraging all businesses to think about this now I really do feel for those in um, the hospitality sector in the entertainment sector in the uh, physical services sector um, and other industries where working from home is just not part of what you can do but most of you I'm going to ask you I'm going to challenge you to think about what you could do differently from home what you could offer in an online format so if you're an entertainer if you're a creative entrepreneur now now right now is the time to start building up your social media profile, building up the delivery of your amazing creativity online. If you are a retailer, now is the time to get creative with how you meet the demands of your clientele. Now, if you've got the most beautiful little boutique fashion outlet in Albert Park, because there's some gorgeous little stores down there, um, start thinking now about what you can do differently to support your community whether that be delivering to the local area one of the bookstore uh, bookstores shout out to the avenue bookstore um, they have just announced that they are going to be home delivering books to their local community as well as um, mailing out books um, through online and telephone orders so start now thinking creatively how can I run my business in this new climate how can I be fleet-footed you might have heard me say or at least even seen on some of my posts before where I've talked about being fleet-footed in business this is where we need as business owners we need to be a bit creative in how we react and respond to what's going on around us small businesses we all live in a changing landscape so things are just changing faster than normal at the moment we need to move with it we need to stay ahead of the uh, curve so we can do our bit to reduce risk in the community and do our bit to ensure the viability and ongoing success of our businesses now whether you're a business owner or not if you if you teach if you teach drama if you teach painting if you if you sing if you love to read start looking at what you can do to support your community you could you could run a youth group online and connect kids uh, who are at home in isolation you know, look at these beautiful videos of um, what's going on in Italy at the moment with neighbors in apartment buildings singing to one another across balconies I mean that stuff is gold um, I'm kind of hoping I feel like I need to stop if I'm gonna stockpile anything it should be tambourines and maracas and then I can hand them out to all my neighbors in my apartment building here and we can sing to each other anyway I think it'd be fantastic so think about what you could be doing differently now in the private practice setting 
I'm saying to my business coaching clients, act now. <laughs> Did I say that loud enough? Act now. Do not wait for quarantine. Do not wait for community advice to shut everything down. Act now. Offer every client the opportunity to be seen from the comfort of their own home via online uh, means such as Zoom or by a telephone. They will determine for themselves whether or not they can afford to pay you for that service. Stop relying on whether or not there are rebates, whether or not people can afford it. Stop thinking for people. I've I've made videos about this before, about how cross I get when business owners assume that I won't want something that they have to offer. So there was a, I remember doing a video where I was talking about buying shoes for my son and we were at the Birkenstock shop in Hobart and the woman there was so helpful and so wonderful. Um, my son has the same size feet as I do, my older son. And she was shocked that I wanted to spend $200 on these Birkenstocks that he's clearly going to grow out of in five minutes flat um, and she almost wasn't going to offer them to me because they were the only ones that fit him in the shop and I said to her they will fit me if he grows out of them I'll wear them like they these will get lived in it's okay <laughs> but she almost wasn't going to offer me the shoes because she assumed I wouldn't want to spend that much money so when when whether it's a restaurant or whatever it might be don't assume that people don't want the service that you could offer in a creative way to meet the needs of your clientele, to meet the needs of your audience, to meet the needs of your business's survival. So just start thinking creatively. What could you do today? What could you offer today that yesterday you assumed nobody would want? Nobody would want to pay for Nobody would want to pay for talking to me on the phone because there's no rebate. I'm mean, talking about mental health services now or health services. Forget the rebate your clients will determine for themselves whether or not they value and need what you're offering. It's your job to offer it. It's their job to decide whether or not they need it or want it. So stop doing the deciding for them. So this thinking allows you to get creative, allows you to do more from home or from within your office space without exposing other people to greater risk. And it means that we're doing our bit as businesses uh, to flatten that curve, that rate of infection throughout the community, or at least, you know, that's what we've been told will help. We don't know, but we can do our bit. So that's what I'm doing, that's what my business is doing, and that's what I'm hoping we can all find a way to do more of. Let me know in the comments, uh, because this is a conversation we all need to stay part of. So let me know in the comments if you are doing something creatively in your business, and don't be afraid to post your Instagram or your Facebook uh, link in the comments so we can cheer you on for doing your part to reduce risk in our community. And do you know what else? Do you know what else? I've seen a few posts about this, which I really, really love this idea. If this all, if we manage to contain this, if we as a global community manage to contain this, and we all go, well, that was a big storm in a teacup, that was a fuss over nothing, it would be because we won, because we were smart, and we did our best and we worked together. And not only that, you, if you're in business, will have learnt something new that you can do that is valuable to your clientele that you can continue to do. So what I suspect is gonna happen when all of the dust settles, when all of this settles down and we've all come out the other end whenever or wherever that lands us, going, wow, I now have an online business. Well, I already have an online business, but you guys, we go, wow, here's an online arm to my business that I had never thought of before. Or here's a way I can reach more people without being blinkered by geographical boundaries. Or here's a method of delivering my service that never occurred to me before. So I think we're going to be entering into a new landscape with business. I think it's exciting. I think it's an opportunity for us globally to reduce all sorts of things, not just infection risks, but reducing all sorts of things like carbon emissions and so on. So who knows, we could even be doing something for the environment while we're at it. And wouldn't that be a win-win? 
going to stay positive, right? All right. Thank you so much for joining me live today. And I will be watching for the comments. So please do let us know in the comments what you're doing to flatten the curve, what you're doing to contribute. If you have got no idea how or, or what you could do, don't be afraid to ask questions. We're all here to back you up and support you and help you brainstorm. In the meantime, have a fabulous afternoon and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye for now. And stay well. <laughs>